Life in Great Britain during the 1800s was not a great place for women. Women were treated unfairly and were controlled completely different by the men in their lives. Women weren't encouraged to have a real education nor obtain a professional career. They were considered weak compared to all men. Not only this, but the right to vote was denied to all women. This was until Emmeline Pankhurst came into the picture. Emmeline Golden, her birth name, was born on July 14, 1858 in Manchester, England. As a young girl, she went to an all-girls school, but their education was not considered important. Emmeline was a prominent figure in her family. She was strong and had more motivation than her eight other siblings. From a young age, her father, Robert Golden, had believed and said what a pity she wasn't born a lad. Emmeline believed it shouldn't matter whether she was a woman or a lad. As a teenager, she attended an anti-slavery pro-suffragette meeting alongside with her mother. The meeting was inspiring and Emmeline hoped for positive changes in favor of women's rights to vote. As she said in her autobiography, Suffragette, My Own Story, she states, Young as I was, I could not have been older than five years. I knew perfectly well the meaning of the words slavery and emancipation. She believed it was necessary that all women were equal to men. In 1879, Emmeline Golden married Richard Pankhurst. Richard was a lawyer and author of the first bills in favor of women's rights, who drafted an amendment to the municipal Franchise Act of 1869, which allowed unmarried women householders to vote in local elections, and who wrote the Married Women's Property Acts in 1870 and 1882. Later, Emmeline and Richard founded the Women's Franchise League in 1889. When her husband, Richard, died suddenly in 1898, she went into a state of shock and mourning. In 1903, she founded the Women's Social and Political Union, or the WSPU, alongside her daughters, Christabel and Sylvia. She created the motto, Deeds, Not Words. That meant, do it, don't just say you will. The group's early militancy took non-violent forms. Women had always campaigned for equality and the right to vote in a peaceful manner, but their arguments were always ignored. This is why the passionate and dedicated group of women in the WSPU were willing to take action in any way necessary. They tied themselves to railings, smashed windows, and even committed arson. In February of 1908, Emmeline was arrested for the first time when she tried to break into the House of Parliament in order to bring a protest to the Prime Minister. Three conciliation bills were put before the House of Commons. One each year in 1910, 1911, and in 1912, which would extend the right to vote to women in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland to around 1,500,000 wealthy property-owning women. The Cat and Mouse Act of 1913, led by Emmeline and Christabel, allowed for the early release of prisoners who had become weak and were at risk of death. This act led to the in-prison protest of many imprisoned suffragettes. The women would deny themselves food, water, and sleep until they became very sick. Then they would be sent home until they became healthy again. Many women were violently force-fed in order to prevent them from being sent home. Emmeline Pankhurst was arrested several times and described them as like a human being in the process of turning into a wild beast. Christabel Pankhurst took leadership of the WSPU in 1913 because of Emmeline's then current imprisonment. Many of the members left due to the uprise in violence being counterproductive. Two of Emmeline's daughters, Adela and Sylvia, also left the movement, which caused a rift in the family that never healed. During the same year, on June 4th, Emily Davison an important suffragette, recognized by Emmeline, threw herself in front of one of the king's horses. In order to prove a point about the suffragette movement, 
This caused her death four days later on June 8th. Emily Davidson's death inspired Emmeline to sail to America in order to raise money for the WSPU and give out a speech about the ignorance and heartbreak they were witnessing in order to achieve equal voting rights. Unfortunately, this was postponed due to the public gaining knowledge of Emmeline's intentions. The press began to get involved. According to the lead Daily Call newspaper of September 8, 1913, before Mrs. Emmeline Pankhurst can be admitted to the United States, the United States immigration officials must determine whether her prison record in England will bar her from admission as an undesirable alien. This meant that the United States was debating on whether or not to grant her access to the country. Upon Emmeline Pankhurst's arrival on Ellis Island, she was detained due to her prison record. Emmeline was imprisoned in mid-September and put through questioning in mid-October 1913. During this time, Iowa released a statement in the newspaper saying that Pankhurst would not be welcome into the state by feminists and the government. Women of Iowa had found her previous acts of violence incredibly insulting and that it would only harm their cause. Of course, other women across the country did not agree and campaigned and protested against the imprisonment. In November, President Wilson finally allowed Emmeline access to the United States. On November 13, 1913, Emmeline finally decided to give out her speech in Hartford, Connecticut to speak about all the ignorance taking place. This famous speech was entitled, Freedom or Death. Part of it reads, Human life for us is sacred, but we say if any life is to be sacrificed, it shall be ours. We won't do it ourselves, but we will put the enemy in the position where they have to choose between giving us freedom or giving us death. Emmeline Pankhurst gave in all her efforts to gain the right to vote. In February 1918, women with the ages of 30 and above were permitted to vote. An act shortly after was passed for women to sit in the House of Commons. The Parliament officially gave women voting rights from the ages of 21 on July 2, 1928, just like men. This act was known as the Equal Franchise Act. Unfortunately, Emmeline died a few weeks before this could occur. The women's suffrage event in Great Britain gave more inspiration to explore the equality of women and their rights to vote. Also, she was able to impact women's suffragettes in the United States by her words and actions. Because of this event, women are now treated more fairly and allowed more freedom. Pankhurst never gave up, and because of her efforts, the actions of the women's suffragettes are now recognized as political and just. Although women were granted equal voting rights and equal rights in general during the 1900s, women are still being treated as less than men in many circumstances. Today, women are fighting for equal rights all over the world. In the month of January 2017, many women stood up and created the first annual women's march around the United States in trying to clearly state, women rights are human rights. Many women state that they are getting paid less at least 80 cents less than men when you are working for the same company, the same business, and have the same commitment. This is all throughout the United States. As a solidarity to Emmeline Pankhurst, we went to the Orange County Women's March on January 20th, 2018.